It's hype, it's aggressive, it's honest, it's open, it's truthful, it's so London, yeah, so London. Yeah, I'm just sitting here. I ain't saying much, I just think. And my eyes don't blue, left or right, they just blink. I think too deep and I think too long. Plus, I think I'm getting weak because my thoughts are too strong. I'm just sitting here. When I think about Dizzy Rascal, Boy in the Corner, the first word that comes to mind is classic. I call it like the golden age of grime. It's almost like a legacy moment. It laid the foundation. It's probably the best way I could put it. Like Anything that is the first of its kind is important. It shows that something is possible that people may not have thought was possible before it happened. That's why Boy in the Corner as an album went from the soundtrack of Bo and just like ripples in a, in, a, in a lake, like it just spread. I heard Dizzy Rascal's I Love You with loads of my friends in like a big circle and all I heard was the claps, the bass. Obviously we was young, we was like 15 when it came out. And we was like, no, no, shit, bro, 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 bro. Everyone was just like, rated the album basically. It was a, yeah. I did what everybody else did at the time. I went to HMV, picked it up the first week it was out. I heard it in bits and bobs when he was putting it together. We were working on some Roll Deep stuff. Dizzy obviously was part of Roll Deep at the time. I remember him having the beat for I Love You and everyone in the studio just being mad on that beat and like, we'd never heard anything like it. It was just so industrial. The very first time I heard Dizzy Rascal was actually the very first time I heard Grime. I was working at a magazine called Touch. It was around 2002, 2003, and my friend Chantal Fiddy played me this track, which I think was I Love You. It was definitely by Dizzy. I'm going to assume it was I Love You. And I was like, what is this horrible noise? A few days later, I was like, that, that tune you played me the other day, play it again. And um, she played it again. And I was like, oh, there is something about it that's just very different. It was just epic, because even when you look at the CD cover, like, it's bright yellow. It stands out, Dizzy Rascal, in the corner of it. Do you know what I mean? It's just something you wanted to get. You go to someone, the Boy in the Corner album cover, they're going to know exactly what you're talking about and they're going to be able to position themselves in the same way. And they're going to remember what Dizzy was wearing. I mean, that is some juice right there. Ridiculous. I would say that Dizzy Rascal completely blew the door open. Sitting here was the track for me, it's very like sharp, quite aggressive, really frustrated lyrics. It's a little journey, do you know what I mean? If you listen to the album, like, so for example, you have Sitting Here, then you'd have It's a Brand New Day, then you can go from I Love You to Jezebel, and it has like different topics, which is rare, do you know what I mean? On CDs at that time, a lot of people didn't really have a lot of topics to listen to. Like, remember back then, yeah? It was all about duh, 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 And I think for me, it was just like listening to like a soundtrack of what we were all growing up doing and, and the area and the shops that he mentioned and the people. And there were so many people in this kind of mile and a half radius. You had like Wiley, you had most of Roll Deep live around here, Roth Squad, Tinchy Strider lived just down there, Dizzy was over the back there, Flo Dan lived across the road over there. I lived two minutes away on Devon's Road, which is just around the corner. So. It, yeah, it just felt like he was really putting the ends on the map. My favourite track from Boy in the Corner was Brand New Day. It starts off quite negative, talking about, you know, things that happen in the ends, but there's always a bigger picture, you know, there's always a positive ending in certain situations, and I feel that's important. It's still relevant today. I used to listen to it in my ride out of van back then, so it's like I had it on all the time. And I think for me, this brought to the table a degree of lyricism that hadn't been heard before. It's totally off the wall, totally different. He's using different rhyming patterns, different types of slang. He's very, very English, very British. This is one of the reasons why I love Dizzy Russell, because he doesn't say words properly. He says, I don't obey no policeman, cause. But in the tune, he says, I don't obey no policeman. He says, policeman, policeman, cause. They forget they're human and get excited quickly, but he ain't got a gun, I'll kick him around. Just the way, he's, the way he speaks. I love the way he speaks. I love the way he says words. I love the way he doesn't finish words properly. I think it had such an impact on the generation that moulded the culture because of the subject matter. That CD literally has every subject that a teenager was going through in their life. There's a song for that. Whether you were a young black kid in East London or a white kid on a council estate in Liverpool. It was really talking to people and, and giving a voice to 
a lot of the ways that they viewed the state of, you know, Tony Blair's Britain at the time. Like, it wasn't just a boat album. It wasn't like, oh, I'm from Roman Road or oh, I go Devons to go Barry's or it was just like, bruv, I'm from the streets and man's trying to get out in it. Boy in the Corner is a grime album, but when everyone talks about what grime is and like the BPMs and whatnot and so forth, it never really fell under that. Like, I don't think any track on Boy in the Corner is even 140. I think they're like 138. Um, they're not like, this is grime as 140 or 70, um, but it's definitely a grime album. Finally getting the, the finished album probably like a year later and just listening to it from like start to finish. Um, I just remember thinking, wow, like he's, he's actually made a, a, an album that's definitely going to live the test of time. And you could already tell it was going to be a classic album. Going back to that time when I first heard um, I Love You and tracks like that from Boy in the Corner, it sounded so of another world. It sounded futuristic in many ways. And I think actually if you play it today in 2016, it still sounds even more futuristic than most grime that's coming out now. Every time a tune starts, I'm like, oh yeah, this is my favourite tune. Then the next one comes in, I'm like, no, 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 this is my favourite tune. There's so many on there. And I remember I had, um, too Far, featuring Wiley, we had that on repeat for time. Who do they think we are? You pushed me too far, you get me? We'd be on the block listening to it, and, and it's not just like something small that we're just listening to, we know that the rest of the country were in on it, so it, yeah, it was just an exciting time. I would still play I Love You and Stop That now, and they'll still get massive responses now from kids that were probably like two years old when the album came out in the first place, you know? The reason why there'll always be a place for grime is because it's the closest reflection we have to what's really going on, not a reflection of what we would like things to be. That's why it's like, for every generation that's coming up, they gravitate towards it. It's just in this constant cycle of any time anyone even mentions grime, you mention Boy in the Corner and people look for those foundations of music. This guy released the album at 17. I released my first album at 19. I could not have released my album at 17. I wanted to, I couldn't. So what he managed to encapsulate in, in one album was this entire culture of young people that were growing up in and around Bow, East London during the sort of 90s and the early noughties. And he encapsulated that in a way that had never been done before. And I don't think has actually been done since. At the time when Dizzy um, achieved the Mercury Award, I'll be honest with you, I didn't even know what the Mercury Award was at that time. It was amazing because it was like you released the album and you won an award, like ignorantly, like, that sounded sick to me. For me, like, there's a grittiness and the independence of it. I just fucking loved it, man. Boy in the Corner is the DNA. It's the ground zero. It's that point where life was created from it, a genre sprung from the album. I mean, obviously, you've got now Skepta's Konnichiwa, um, you've got Kano's Home Sweet Home, you've got a whole catalogue of Wiley's music. And I think even Wiley would say it himself, Dizzy Russell's Boy in the Corner is just where it all just came together. And you have to, I think if you're going to understand the sound, you have to not only understand its roots, but also its foundations and where it all came together. So, yeah, Boy in the Corner, mate. Bloody hell.